Coming up on today's episode of AMA John Report. Multi-GP John Racing League and DRL to host first ever John Racing Championship. FAA warns drone operators of hurricane. An EAA sends letter regarding model aircraft language and FAA reauthorization bill. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. The 2018 Multi-GP Drone Racing Championship and 2019 DRL Swatch Tryouts Esport Tournament will be held together in Las Vegas, Nevada over the weekend of February 8th through 10th, 2019. The competitions merge real-life drone racing with an esport drone racing tournament with the best pilots in the world meeting to compete. For the first time ever, the winner of the Multi-GP Drone Racing Championship will be offered a contract for the upcoming 2019 DRL season, airing on ESPN. Multi-GP makes drone racing accessible to everyone by providing the only nationwide drone racing series. Drone racers from across the nation progress from local qualifiers to regional races in an effort to advance to the championship and be crowned the Multi-GP champion. With over 20,000 pilots and over 500 chapters across the globe, Multi-GP provides pilot membership software, chapter leadership management, drone racing rules, and is the industry standard in drone racing events. The Drone Racing League hosts a televised global drone race series broadcast on ESPN and other leading broadcast channels around the world. The Multi-GP and DRL partnership means that the two largest names in drone sports are working together in spreading drone sports to every corner of the globe. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. If your airspace authorization expired on September 30, 2018, and you did not receive an airspace authorization extension, the FAA reminds you that you can apply for a new authorization via LANS or the FAA's Drone Zone. They note that the quickest and easiest way to get authorized is through LANS. An FAA-approved UAS service supplier of LANS can grant an airspace authorization in near real time. Over on the man's side of the aviation spectrum, a recent speech by EAA boss Jack Pelton about EAA's mosaic effort created a lot of interest, and it's not just all about manned airplanes. First referred to in terms that would affect the light sport aircraft industry, the program may have a sweeping effect on the cost and capabilities of the next generation of aircraft. Of interest to AMA flyers, though, was the note that the entire Mosaic concept is a sweeping concept that also includes home-built certification and unmanned aerial systems or drones. More info to follow. The FAA has announced nine new partners for its LANCE initiative. The initiative was simultaneously opened to additional ATC facilities and to new industry partners. The five-month onboarding process that began in April resulted in nine new LANS partners. Aeronide, Airbus, AirXOX, Altitude Angel, Converge, DJI, Kitty Hawk, UAS Sidekick, and Unify. The nine joined five companies, Airmap, Harris Corporation, Project Wing, Skyward, and Thales Group, that have already met the technical and legal requirements to provide LANS services. The FAA took another hard line last week as they warned pilots of drones who interfere with fighting wildfires, law enforcement efforts, or other first responders, such as medical flights, that they are now more likely to face serious civil penalties. 
The FAA has provided guidance for agency personnel who handle possible drone violations to refer all cases involving interference with first responders to the FAA Chief Counsel's Office for possible enforcement action. The FAA is authorized to impose a civil penalty of not more than $20,000 in such cases. That was our Journal Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. While Hurricane Michael was bearing down on those of us in the South, the FAA took a sharp tone right from the get-go by warning drone owners and operators they could be subject to significant fines that could exceed $20,000 if they interfered with emergency response operations in the areas affected by the storm. The FAA noted that many aircraft that are conducting life-saving missions and other critical response and recovery efforts are likely to be flying at low altitudes over areas affected by the storm. Flying a drone without authorization in or near a disaster area may unintentionally disrupt rescue operations and violate federal, state, or local laws and ordinances, even if a temporary flight restriction is not in place allow first responders to save lives and property without interference. Government agencies with an FAA certificate or authorization or flying under Part 107, as well as private sector Part 107 drone operators who want to support response and recovery operations, were strongly encouraged to coordinate their activities with a local incident commander responsible for the area in which they want to operate. On September 26, the Experimental Aircraft Association sent a letter to the chairpersons and ranking members of both the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation regarding language concerning model aviation and the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2018. The letter notes that although EAA applies the bipartisan effort of both houses to draft the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2018 and pass an FAA Reauthorization Bill before the close of this session, EAA joins the Academy of Model Aeronautics concern regarding an inconsistency in the language of the special rule for model aircraft in the bill which specifically restrains model aircraft to flying at or below 400 feet above ground level in Class G airspace. The letter goes on to state that certain higher altitude activities, such as model glider competitions, have been going on for decades without any hazard to manned aircraft, and to note the importance of model aircraft as a pathway to manned aviation. While the five-year FAA reauthorization was signed into law Friday without amendments, EAA says it will work with the FAA under the new law to continue the safe and mutually beneficial coexistence between personal aviation and the model aircraft hobby. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program are Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby-john world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.